pound hard by the Mohawk River in upstate New York, so provided the way during its 45 years. It's been a place to test one's spirit, a place in which to find oneself. Its rich tradition has aroused one man so intently that he changed his path to ensure that these corners and straightaways might continue to lift others. Tonight, the new Fonda Speedway beckons the dreamer and offers the future. It's the Budweiser River Raid, and it's live on Rush Hour! Dirt Track, born in the cornfields and lower 40s of rural America. Dirt Track, the cornerstone of racing. The early barnstormers put it all on the line to satisfy their thirst for speed. Now, their great-grandchildren carry the torch with the same spirit and thirst. 700 horsepower rips the earth. For one hour, nothing else matters. It'll raise the hair on the back of your neck. Rush hour on dirt. We are live at Montgomery County Fairgrounds and the track of champions, the new Fonda Speedway in Fonda, New York, for the Budweiser River Rage. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Doug Logan. Welcome to Rush Hour. You know, the simple mention of certain tracks around the country spark immediate images. On the dirt circuit, those tracks are Syracuse, Orange County, and Lebanon Valley. But none of those tracks has more tradition or have run more dirt-sanctioned racing events than Fonda Speedway. Joining me now is Dirt Motorsports racing analyst Gary Montgomery. And Gary, no doubt about it, this is the track of champions. Yeah, that handle's been around for a long time. There are four drivers that come to mind that probably uh, instigated that title. Those four drivers are Pete Corey, Ernie Gahan, Bill Wimble, and Jerry Cook. Corey, the Crescent City Cowboy, a three-time track champion here, numerous times New York State modified champion, won the race at the champions at Langhorne. Ernie Gahan, out of Dover, New Hampshire, used uh, Sonny Casella's woodchopper cars to earn a national championship. Again, this was his home track. Billy Wimble, five times a track champion here, three times a NASCAR modified champion during diving, driving Dave McCready's car is the champion here at this racetrack. And Jerry Cook, the Cookie Monster, a six-time NASCAR modified champion, used the Fonda Speedway as his home base of operation. Now, one year ago, we premiered Rush Hour right here from Fonda Speedway. Gary, we had two shows here during the season, and they were both dynamite. Absolutely were. The first one was a standout affair between Jimmy Horton and Dave Camaro. Classic battle. Up front, all race long, Jimmy Horton. And then from deep in the pack, someplace, came Dave Camaro. In the final five laps, he had his turn on television as well. The story here, Horton, a seasoned veteran out of New Jersey, hundreds of career wins. Camara from Vermont recalls this is home track, a handful of wins. It could have been a giant upset. It wasn't, but it was a great race. Then the second time we came here, classic battle, two big winners, Brett Hearn and Danny Johnson. They love to race one another. They are true professionals, but they hate to lose. They swapped the lead a dozen of times. In the final pass, they swapped paints, and it turned out that Hearn won that night, but it was a great race. Well, we expect similar fireworks here here this evening. Joining us tonight is Cowboy Paul Small, and he's standing by down in the pits with the two masters of the new Fonda Speedway. Doug, I'm with the old master and the new master here at the new Fonda Speedway, and that new master is the new promoter, Rick Lucia. Rick, you're a successful businessman. Why did you ever want to get into promoting auto racing? Well, uh, a lot of people that know me well know that uh, I enjoy racing. I've been, a, uh, been in a race car and uh, this is sort of like relaxation uh, for me away from trucking and construction and so racing is more or less my passion so that's how I got involved here at Fonda when the opportunity came along and it's also been a lot of hard work for you to get this facility open this year yeah we had a lot of window dressing to do and a lot of work to, to bring it online and we were a little nervous there for a while that we wouldn't get it online soon enough but the people have been very patient with us the drivers have been very patient with us and each week we try to make a few improvements I really believe that uh, this is a little easier than trucking. At least it doesn't move. The trucks move going down the road. We've got to deal a lot with the bureaucrats and, uh, and police out on the road. So I'm enjoying this very much. Now, the old master here at the Fonda Speedway has won more track championships than I have fingers on both of my hands. We're, of course, talking about jumping Jack Johnson. Jack, what brings you back to Fonda to compete each and every year? Well, the competition here is uh, real good, and uh, I like the racetrack. I started racing here in the early 60s, and uh, I went into my uh, racing career here at Fonda Speedway. 
Now, this year, it took you a little while before you got your first victory of the year. So far, there's only been one in the win column for you. How about tonight? Well, it looks real good tonight. We won the heat race. We're pretty quick on the watch. If we get some breaks and maybe a good starting spot, uh, hopefully we'll be right there at the end of the race. Don't let Jack Johnson fool you. He's usually been, in the past couple of years, a little weak in the first half of the season. But when we get here at roughly the halfway point, that's when he's come on strong to win the track championship here at the Track of Champions the past two years in a row. Doug? Thank you, Cowboy. You know, in the modern era of Fonda Speedway, started some 44 years ago in 53, for more than half that time, one man has cast a champion's shadow at this track of champions. That man is Jack Johnson. And there you see some of his stats on the screen. 133 career wins. His first win coming back in 1971. His last just a couple of weeks ago. Along the line, 11 track championships. The first in 1975. Then he got four of them back-to-back. -back, 93, 94, 95, and 96. This is truly a track that Jack is very fond of. We are live at the new Fonda Speedway and our coverage of the Budweiser River Rage will continue after these messages. This is the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt is brought to you in part by Easy Care Extended Service Contracts, Top Oil Engine Treatment, Budweiser, the King of Beer, Mid-State Communications, Hoosier Racing Tire, Sunoco A-Plus Mini Market, and by CarQuest Auto Parts. Welcome to the pros, CarQuest. level of excellence, the experience to get the job done right, and a reputation for quality. Like dependable CarQuest filters, high-efficiency filters keep your engine running clean and smooth. That's why professionals choose CarQuest. CarQuest filters, superior by design. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest. Welcome to the pros. If you're going to be tough on your car's engine, you better put something tough in the engine. And no engine treatment is tougher than tough oil. Tough oil, the world's most efficient lubricant, is making a special with your Dutry offer. Buy two 8-ounce bottles of the world's toughest engine treatment for only $25 and get a third bottle free. Oh, well, that's so tough. <laughs> it's beautiful. Tough oil makes engines start easier and run cleaner, faster, and longer. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. That's a tough deal to pass up. Hey, nothing's tougher than tough oil. No matter where, no matter when, if the fish are fighting, you should be fighting. Introducing the Instant Fisherman by Flying Lure. Store it in your glove compartment, backpack, or briefcase. Keep one in your golf bag or under your seat. When you're ready to fish, it's as easy as one, two, three, and you're fishing. Anyone can cast like the pros. It's lightweight and precision balanced. The Instant Fisherman adjusts with its revolutionary slide rod. Hey, other rods just don't fit in the car. The Instant Fisherman is compact, fits virtually anywhere, out of harm's way. The solid internal gears turn fast, so you'll land your fish before it fits the hook. Order the Instant Fisherman for two low payments of $19.95 and receive 12 new flying lures, fishing secrets from the pros, and this convenient tackle pack. This complete offer comes with a money-back guarantee and instruction booklet. Call now. Call 1-800-385-8822 or send $39.90 plus $8.95 shipping to the address on your screen. For faster delivery, call 1-800-385-8822 now. We are live near Albany, New York at the Track of Champions, the new Fonda Speedway for the Budweiser River Rage on Rush Hour. Well, there were two Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series events run earlier this week. Sunday, the Modifieds roared around Cornwall Speedway in Cornwall, Ontario. And our Paul Small has the story. Another packed house was on hand north of the border at Cornwall Motor Speedway way to witness the Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series for Modified. Dr. J. Danny Johnson started on the outside of the front row of the Freightliner 6 for this 97-lap affair. He immediately charged to the lead as the green flag waved. A couple of drivers looking for good finishes. Doug Hoffman in the Blockbuster number 1 to Billy Decker in the Pennzoil 91. Of these two, Hoffman would gain the upper hand. He would cruise the Blockbuster video machine home to a fourth-place finish Sunday night on the quarter mile. A couple of other drivers who needed good finishes and didn't get them were Kenny Tremont, who was the victim of a spin in the 115, and the Reclamation 33 of Jeff Hetzler. Hetzler's rear end broke, and he dug himself an early hole in the Skull Series point standings. 
The winningest driver in Durham Modified Racing, Alan Johnson in the Bobar Service 12B, started deep in the pack for the third consecutive Skull Bandit Racing event. But Alan continued his consistent streak, charging past more cars than any other driver to take home a fifth place finish. You know, we're nailing the top fives, and uh, I'd like to get a little better starting position in the features. We've been starting in the back, but, uh, you know, maybe that'll come, and, you know, maybe maybe we'll have a good, good finish uh, to the end of the year. Barefoot Bob McCready in the Kitty Drugstore's car number nine slipped past the CarQuest 24 Frank Cozy to grab second early. They closed in on leader Danny Johnson, but second was as far as Barefoot Bob could get. I had 90 laps to do it, and I couldn't do it in 90, so it could have been, I guess I didn't have much there. You know, you, hey, if somebody screwed Danny up and knocked him out, I might have got him. But, you know, if things go according to plan, he was just a little bit stronger than us, and, you know, we just uh, didn't quite have enough to handle him. The second generation of the McCready's lead foot Tim was not able to use his Jeff Gordon's power outlet 24 big block. The car wasn't ready. So he brought out the Drex Subs number 94 small block car and proceeded to power that to a third place finish. It's nice to get on the podium with Danny Johnson and Bob McCready. I mean, they got more wins than most people have starts around here. So it was just fun to be out there with them and, you know, to bring our Drex Subs team car to the front and, and have a good night for everybody. The highest finishing Cornwall Speedway regular was Kingston, Ontario's Danny O'Brien in the number 17 car. He'd battle all race long with Jimmy Horton in the number one and ultimately settle for ninth place. And the Hurricane Steve Payne who represented Quebec with his wins extend number one car. The New York driver who campaigns in Quebec every weekend brought home the 10th place finish. This race was all Dr. J's as he brought it across the line to collect the checkered flag and celebrated a wire to wire win. Well, it uh, feels great to be the pointing leader and let them chase me instead of me chasing them, but uh, there's a long ways to go, and uh, it's not over till it's over. There's the rundown from the uh, Cornwall Speedway on Sunday night. Danny Johnson, Bob McCready, Tim McCready, and here we go to Lernerville down near Pittsburgh, where Danny Johnson was the winner over Steve Payne, Kenny Brightfield, Jack Johnson, Bob McCready again at top five, Jimmy Horton in the sixth spot. That was on Tuesday evening. Right, last night we were rained out at Tri-City. Well, the Skull Bandit Racing Series points picture looks this way after four races, and uh, the leader of the points picture at this stage is Danny Johnson, and why not? As the racing season moves along the midseason, there are incredible demands put on some very busy drivers as we take a look at the point standings and see Danny Johnson right there. How about the racing schedule coming up in the next couple of weeks? Well, over an 18-day period, which started at Cornwall, these drivers, these professionals, there are about 15 or 20 of them that will take the whole tour. They'll run in 15 races. That's 15 races in 18 days. They go from Cornwall, Ontario to the north, all the way to near Pittsburgh at Lernerville. They were in Bridgeport, New Jersey. They're all over the map, big tracks, small blocks, uh, tracks. It's a, it's a great, gr grueling affair. Well, one racer who is more than hanging on during these busy times is our school points leader who is standing by with Paul Small. That man would be Dr. J, Danny Johnson, aboard the Freightliner Trucks, car number six. Danny, it's a pretty long series of races here in the early summer, but your team is holding up better than most with a couple of victories under your belt. Yeah, we've had a super season. I got credit the Freightliner team. Uh, for, for preparing such a great car for me and uh, I gotta thank the car owner for uh, you know to, for getting his uh, program together and uh, just like to say a quick hello to all my you know, to my kids at home and uh, family and friends that uh, have been supporting me all these years. You've won more skull races here at the Fonda Speedway than any other dirt modified driver. How about your chances for tonight? I tell you the car feels pretty good. We, the, the only trouble is that we have many other cars that probably feel the same way but we're gonna give it our best shot and hopefully we'll get to the front and we'll see what happens. Dr. J hoping to score a win tonight here at the new Fonda Speedway, Doug. And when we come back, we'll fire up the engines and go racing. Congratulations to Joe Masika, the winner of our Rush Hour on Dirt banner contest. We'll be back to the new Fonda Speedway for the Budweiser River Rage, live on the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. I'm Brett Hearn of the Budweiser Racing Team, and I'm Trooper John Hollenbeck of the New York State Police. Events happen very quickly on the racetrack. A crash can occur at any moment, so we need to be alert and ready to react to danger. It's the same for you. You need to be at your sharpest on the highway. Alcohol slows the reflexes and increases the reaction time that you may need to avoid a crash. We have to know our limits on the track to be safe. So do you. Please, don't drink and drive.
A-plus mini market, your 24-hour ticket to convenience. Now every 10 ounce, every 16 ounce, and every 20 ounce cup of Colombian coffee is just 79 cents at participating A-plus and A-plus express stores, where one price fits all. Over 3,000 items. A-plus mini market, 24-hour convenience, your store, plus more. Oh, you want to see my discover card statement? I am very, very pretty. I love to be pampered. I go have my hair done. I love to go have my nails done, have pedicures, manicures. My biggest weakness would have to be shoes. Hmm. Cashback bonus award? Really floats my boat. How many credit cards make a statement like that? I am definitely a shopaholic. It pays to discover. Use it where you see the Nova sign. In honor of Coors Light's 10-year anniversary, and for making Coors Light the number one light beer in New York and New Jersey, Mets fans are invited to join the celebration. Coors Light and Sports Channel want you to win a trip for two to Colorado, tour the Coors Brewery, and see the Mets play the Rockies August 16th at Coors Field. Ten first prize winners will receive tickets to a Mets home game and the sports pack filled with Sports Channel and Coors merchandise. Get in on the celebration today. Send a postcard with your name, address, age, and phone number to this address, and tap the Rockies with Coors Light and Sports Channel. Speedway, the Budweiser River Range 97. The cars have just rolled off. The call to gentlemen start your engines has taken place. The field of 30 rolling off as we'll have a couple of parade laps before the start of this great affair. Here's our race analysis, a 97 lap contest. The caution laps will count after the first 50. The final three will also not count. It will complete the race under green. There's a $30,000 purse. The winner's share is $6,000. We always keep an eye on the weather. Temperature 72 degrees, humidity 57%. And it's a beautiful night for racing. How about that track description, Gary? Well, they call it a half mile, pear-shaped or egg-shaped or whatever. They're 400 foot straightaways, four degrees of banking in the corners. That's hardly noticeable. Richard Petty won a race here a number of years ago. He still refers to it as that little track up north with five corners. Very unique configuration here. As for the track condition, let's go down to the track in Paul Small. I tell you what, Doug, despite the human weather we've had in the, here in the central New York area over the past couple of days, we've got outstanding track conditions tonight here at Fonda. There's plenty of tack down here on this racing surface. It's hard, it's smooth, and there's a nice cushion build up on the outside. So look for a two-group racetrack as this one develops, Doug. And we have a huge crowd on hand, and the fans are just chomping at the bit to go racing. The Rush Hour pace truck provided by Sam Dell Dodge, downtown Syracuse, New York. Now let's take a look at the starting grid for the Budweiser River Rage at Fonda Speedway. Row number one, the 97 of Mike Romano. And outside row one, the 55 of Rich Ricky Jr. Second row starters are Chris Moore out of Mayor, Massachusetts, and Pat Ward is alongside. He's out of Genoa, New York, in the John Finch car. Row three, it's Jeff Hetzler and the doctor, Danny Johnson. Row four on the inside, starting seventh will be Billy Decker in the Pennzoil Olsen car. Timmy Fuller is alongside in the CarQuest Olsen car. Last week's Rush Hour winner, Kenny Brightville, is inside row five, and Mr. Dirt from last year, Brent Hearn, is outside row five. Starting 11th tonight will be Randy Snyder. He's a regular here at the Fonda Speedway. Alongside is another Fonda regular. That's Tony Pepicelli, 32-year-old second-generation driver. Power laden row 7, Jack Johnson and Jimmy Horton. Row number 8 on the inside will be Dale Plank, the second-generation driver out of Homer, New York, in the Smith & Hastings car number 74. Bob McCready, the master of going faster, is alongside. Row 9, Bobby Barron and Tim McCready. Back in row 10 on the inside will be Kenny Hansen. Outside, Dirt's winningest driver with over 260 career wins, Alan Johnson. Tim Dwyer, row 11, and outside row 11, he's struggling in this goal series, Doug Hoffman. Starting in position number 23 tonight will be another Fonda regular. This is Jeff Crowley. He's out of Altamont, New York. Alongside is the 
the driver we talked about earlier from Pulteney, Vermont, is David Camara. Then it's Steve Payne and Kenny Tremont in row 13. Row number 14 on the inside will be Maynard Perrette, 60-some years old, alongside his Roger Lorena out of Ivytown, Pennsylvania. So spectacular in the early going here on Rush Hour Live. Our starter is Bobby Watson. We're set to go racing as you see row 15, Frank Cozy and Lou Lazaro. Mike Romano has yet to win a race here at Fonda this year, but he's yet to finish out of the top three. So he's super competitive, and he leads this pack out of turn four. Down the front straightaway. Bobby Watson has the green flag ready. He waves it. We are racing at the new Fonda Speedway in the Budweiser River Rage. And dicing into the lead, Mike Romano with that low groove. Rich Ricky Jr. is second. Side by side out of turn two. They get out of second back straightaway. Two second generation drivers out front. Romano leads but right after him is young Mike Ricky in the 55. There's the red 55. Pat Ward has taken over the number three spot as they shuffle down the front straightaway. And back into turn one. Field moving smoothly, moving very, very quickly on this super fast Fonda Speedway surface. Good battle back in the pack. Side by side racing down the back straightaway. Up front we've got a battle for the number two spot. There you see Brett Hearn trying to overtake Billy Decker. Decker in the yellow car. Hearn in the Budweiser red and white car. They're trying to run down Chris Ford in the number 10. Now Hearn is currently in eighth position. We saw him during the heats and he was running like a rocket. He was clearly the fastest car in his heat. Maybe the fastest car that we saw in all the qualifiers. Here's the battle for the number three spot. Danny Johnson has just taken over the spot. Further back in the field we see the battle going on between Decker and Hearn with uh, Chris Moore in the red number 10 car. There the cars running third, fourth, and fifth as Hessler's gotten back by Danny Johnson. That's a great side by three wide. Look at that little contact on the turn two. Pat Ward in the red and white car, number 50 with the blue numerals. Danny is in the red and white car with gold numerals, number six. And up on the outside in the orange and yellow, 33, Jeff Hessler out of Wallkill, New York, the reclamation car. Way high for Hessler, but he hangs on to the spot in front of the doctor. And he seems to have backed out of it for just a bit. And there you see in the screen the second place car, the red number 55. That's Mike Ricking, second generation driver out of New Falls, New York. He doesn't run to the series on a regular basis, but he's doing a great job here in the early going. Holding on to the number two spot. Again, our leader is Romano. He's checked out. Again, Hetzler going high. And Hetzler has Ricky. He's in the second spot. That's the battle for three now. As Ricky's fallen back to three, Pat Ward is working on him. side-by-side. Side. Danny Johnson way up on the top of the racetrack. Hetzler using that uh, and we have a car in the wall struggling just a bit. That was Danny Johnson and he seems to be slowing. Oh, he may have broken. Danny's got a broken front. Yeah, that's right. The right front of the car is set down and Danny got up against the wall. You saw that and that's a problem. It could be a flat. It is. And there yep. you see the flat tire. Because he didn't wang the ball a bunch, and that appears to be all the problem. So, caution laps are not counting here, Doug, so he can get back out without losing a lap, but he will give up a lot of very, very valuable track position. So, he will hustle into the pits, and that crew will get to work. There is your leader, Mike Romano, out of Johnstown, New York, and that Big Nell modified. His father started his racing career here, and then with a couple of brothers, uh, A.J. Romano, and this is uh, Mike Romano, the older of the brothers, uh, does a lot of racing up in Quebec, uh, calling uh, this his Saturday night race place for 1997. Jeff Hetzler in the number 33. He is uh, in second position and pulls to the outside, and uh, that means Mike Romano, being the leader, has the choice of the groove. He takes the inside for the side-by-side -side restart as Danny Johnson is headed back out on the track. He will rejoin the back of the pack. We had Jack Johnson in the pits as well. Yeah, I didn't see him go in, but he was clearly there. So Jack Johnson taking this opportunity to make a pit stop with the Duchess overhead doors number 87. That's the car that Jimmy Horton drove last year. Jack Johnson is this, and he's now in the pits. We thought he was coming out, but he's going in. He's uh, They're changing a left front tire on uh, Jack Johnson's car. Let's go down to the pits. Paul Small. Down here in the pit area, jumping Jack Johnson in the Duchess 87, just changing a flat left front tire. Meanwhile, for the Freightliner 6 of Danny Johnson, it's a right front tire. Now, all the teams are using the dirt hard compound tires this evening. Tire wear shouldn't be a concern, but perhaps flat tires may be, Doug. Well, already Danny Johnson and Jack Johnson have had to 
to change a shoe, as they say. They're back out on the track, and they will rejoin the back of the pack. And, of course, they will be, as you mentioned, Gary, on the lead lap. That's important, but the fact that they're so far in the back, and this will flatten the tire any day on anybody's car when you put it in the wall. You're going to see Danny making heavy contact right there. And, again, he was lucky that he didn't crash the car, bend up a lot of suspension parts, so a flat tire was an easy, easy out for Danny in that one. We're set to go racing six laps into our 97-lap Budweiser River Rage at the new Fonda Speedway, and the green flag flies once again. We are back to racing, and, yes, Mike Romano has has Hetzler, he has the lead now in turn two. Hetzler's had a lot of bad luck in the early going of the 1997 season. And now he's running up front, of course, very, very early. Timmy Fuller has taken over the number four spot. Pat Ward holds on to three. Brett Hurd is up to five already, running in the number six spot. Ricky has fallen back to six. Decker is seven as we work at lap number seven. A lot of side-by-sides, slideways racing here at Fonda Speedway. And they had a shot of Jimmy Horton using the way outside of that black number M1. That's Jimmy Horton, the defending champion of this race, driving a different car this year. But he's quick and he's on the move. Challenge for number two. Now challenge for the lead. And Jeff Hetzler has Mike Romano using that high groove. Just drove by on the outside like there was nothing to it and uh, takes the lead. Now we see Pat Ward working on... Romano for the number two spot. Pat Ward way down on the bottom trying to run the inside move and take advantage of Romano as they work out of turn four, head down to the line one more time. Pat Ward in the John Finch car. This is a car that Pat designed himself using a lot of uh, uh, ideas from Dave Lake's champ car, but this is a one-of-a-kind uh, Pat Ward car owned by John Finch, who owns a logging and trucking company. He puts up the dollars and Pat Ward does a great job driving for him. And he's got second as we have a car stopped on the race course. Yeah, this is Dale Plank, a sensational young driver out of Homer, New York, who runs this car on special occasions only. The Smith Brothers Concrete uh, Automobile uh, is in trouble. Caution flag flies here in the early going. We're on lap number 10, our second caution. We are live at the Track of Champions, the new Fonda Speedway in Fonda, New York, and our coverage of the Budweiser River Rage will continue after these messages on the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt, Dirt. Whether your car is Strawberry Pearl Coat, Santa Fe Silver, or Candy Apple Red, PPG Certified Collision Repair Shop uses premium paint and a palette of over 100,000 colors to precisely match your car's color, whether it's champagne metallic, emerald green, or banana yellow. PPG Premium Paint, the right match for your car. Look for the local PPG Certified Body Shop in your area. for $79 at SunJet all the way to Florida. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET for your non-stop ticket to Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, or Tampa St. Pete from only $79. SunJet offers more fun in the sun with its new service to Myrtle Beach from only $79. Non-stop service to Dallas from just $99. Our Florida vacation packages start at just $199. Great low fares, non-stop flights. Your ticket to the sun is SunJet. Call 1-800-4-SUNJET today. He's just fun to watch because he throws the four great pitches down at the knees consistently, and, and you know that will. Uh, you know, if you can do that, you're going to get a lot of ground balls, and you're going to keep your team in the game. Tune in to Mets Inside Pitch on Sports Channel for in-depth features, reports, and interviews. Mets fans won't want to miss it, and catch a complete recap of the past week's games. Mets Inside Pitch Fridays at 5:30 exclusively on Sports Channel.
We are back and we are live at the track of champions on rush hour, the Budweiser River Race. The leader, Jeff Hensler, Pat Ford is second, and Romano is third. Hearn and Fuller rounding out the top five. With an update on a couple of drivers, let's go down to the pits and Paul Small. Doug, Mike Romano, who's running in the top five in the number 97 machine, had a smoking problem earlier in his qualifying heat. Turns out it was just overflow, but we may want to keep our eyes on that. Also, a couple of other drivers to watch. Bobby Varon moving up through the field nicely in the front 10 or 111 says he's just going to kind of sit and wait for the race to come to him right now, but the car feels good, and you might want to keep your eyes on that blockbuster video number one of Doug Hoffman. He's already moved up into the 12th position. Doug? And starting 10th, moving up to 4th is Brett Hearn. The leaders in that front row, Jeff Hetzler and Pat Ward. Yeah, the caution lights have been extinguished. We're set to go back to racing. We should establish, I should establish, that it's Rich Ricky Jr., not Mike Ricky, as I announced. Those are two brothers that race. This is Rich Ricky Jr. doing a great job on the 55. The green flag flies. We're back to racing. And Jeff Hetzler fires. He's got the lead. Ward with that outside group. Hetzler, three did not finishes in the first four school races this year. So, boy, he's looking to really make some moves here as we have Brett Hurd in the third place. Brett Hearn with a bonsai move down low. Got inside Mike Romano to take that position. We talked about how fast Hearn was in his qualifier. Well, it appears that car is still a rocket because he has come from, as you said, a 10th spot, now running in position number three. He was way up on the top to make a pass a few moments ago that came to the bottom. So the car will work top or bottom. Further back in the pack here, we see the battle for the number four spot now. That's Romano with 97 being tested by Decker and Jimmy Horton. Here's a Horton coming on the inside. As he flies by Roma yeah, Romano in the 97. So Horton goes to four. Romano runs five. Decker is six. Fuller is seven. As we work to lap number 12. Jimmy Horton starting in row seven. On the move. Billy Decker now testing Mike Romano. Down the back stretch. Can't get him yet. This racetrack is offering several lanes for great competition. You saw that wide back straightaway. They can run top or bottom or in the middle or any place they want to go. Here you see him side by side down the front straightaway as well. Romano on the outside. Decker on the bottom of that Pennzoil number 91. Here comes Fuller in the 19. You can see the black number M1 showing in the screen as well. And again, that is Jimmy Horton. Great racing here as Decker has the position. Here we saw Camara coming into the screen. Old television Dave. Yeah. And I stand corrected in that black car. That was Brightville. So they, we've got the M1 up front. Brightville is in the black number 19. He's making uh, his presence known as well. But David Camara out of Pulteney, Vermont, started deep in the pack. He is now challenging with the Camara slate. Olsen, he, actually, uh, yeah, that's a teal car. It's a teal car. He runs against the uh, Olsen car of Fuller. That's the white 19. Yeah, we mentioned uh, uh, outside of the show, watch for Dave Camara. Yeah, I guess he heard us. He's got a couple of victories here already this year. This would be a big one as he continues to move up. We are working now on the inside of Fuller. They battle through the east end of the speedway. It's turns three and four down on the east end. Kenny Brightbill, a 48-year-old veteran. Sinking Spring, Pennsylvania. Making uh, some progress here in the early going. We've got a battle for a second spot. Hearn outside of Pat Ward. Ward slams the door shut as they head into turn one. But look at Brett Hearn working down low. As we said earlier, that car worked top or bottom. There you saw it working on the bottom. Brett Hearn is a rocket in the, the Budweiser corporate jet here tonight. It's a car that is designed and built by his brother. Call him a TO Pro car. Is there a number of them? I just mentioned Camaro drives one as well. We have five different chassis builders here tonight. They were, for a while, we had five different ones in the top five. Ward's car is of his own design. That's Pat Ward, the 56. We mentioned the two skull races that were run earlier this week were won by Danny Johnson. Red Hearn was leading last night at Tri-City when Rain stopped the race on lap 11, so he has been running strong. That race has been rescheduled for an August date uh, down at Tri-City in Franklin, Pennsylvania. Leader Jeff Hetzler, now about four car lengths in front of Hearn as they work down the back straightaway. There's a look at Bob McCready and Alan Johnson, top two winningest drivers in their certain history. And it's a battle for the 11th position. Looks like McCready's going to get it as he slides by on the inside of the Kitty Drugstore Syracuse frame service car. McCready 
on the inside. Up on the top is Alan Johnson in the bow bar, number 12B. That's a car change for Alan this year. That's a car that Jack Johnson has driven for the last couple of years. But Alan Johnson, no relation, is the hired gun for Jim Bobar this year. He's having some great success in the car, but right now he's struggling. Again, that's the battle for position number 11. There you look ahead, you saw the 10th place car, Brightville, the black number 19. Only five drivers in the history of dirt modified motorsports have won over 200 races. Those are two of them right that's there. Right, side by side. And uh, I like the uh, comment that uh, Timmy Fuller made talking about being on the podium with a couple of guys that had won more races than many had started, referring to Bob McCready, not as his dad, but as Bob McCready. But uh, nevertheless, uh, a lot of respect for his dad. We all have a lot of respect for the master going faster as he now takes over position number 11. Now we look up to the front of the pack again. The lap car of Lou Lazaro, the number four, separating, it was separating the leader, Hetzler, and the challenger, and he's coming on strong, Brett Hearn. Brett Hearn trying to dial in Jeff Hetzler. This is a 97-lap race. We're 23 laps in. Down the back straightaway goes Hetzler. No wins here. First one would be a big one if it came tonight. Jimmy Horton has taken over the number three spot. There he is with the M1 black car, Bob Faust, BNF General Machine car, another of the Olsen cars. Jimmy Horton, the seasoned veteran that we talked about, the defending champion of this race. He's run Winston Cup cars and uh, Arca cars as well. It's a battle. Okay, well, that wasn't a battle for position. As Pat Ward had moved around, the 60-some-year-old driver, Lou Lazaro. We got a couple of 60-some-year-old drivers in the field. Lou Lazaro and Maynard Brett both made the race here tonight, and they are uh, uh, both uh, in their 60s. We just heard off the radio that Bobby Barron radio track was tacky and uh, the outside was getting slick. Well, uh, that's his analysis, but the outside seems to be working for a number of the drivers. But again, it depends on where you are. Front stretch can be one way, back stretch another way, the corners another way, and it'll change all night long. But the bottom line is it's a fast, fast racetrack. Here's the battle for the lead. Again, you can see Hearn within about three car lengths as they work down the back straight away. He was closer in the corners. We'll see him. Hearn's up on the outside. Hetzler down on the bottom. Hetzler has reported that his car is working beautifully. It better be because Hearn is coming. And now they've got traffic to contend with. The leaders will catch lap traffic as they come down the front straightaway and off into turns one and two. Hearn on the bottom. Hetzler on top. They are catching Roger Laredo in the number 36, the Tanner Dairy Stores car. Roger has been having such a great uh, series here in this full series in the early going. About to go a lap down to our leaders here in the early going. Just another great Hetzler-Hearn battle. Yeah, they used to run on Saturday nights at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Hearn has switched his Saturday night venue to Lebanon Valley Speedway, but these guys have diced it out at Orange County and other racetracks for a long, long time. Two seasoned professionals, and they really get the job done, and they're getting it done right now, and they're working in heavy traffic. Yes, in traffic, your leader, the 33 of Jeff Hetzler, and down low goes Brett Hearn in turn three. Can he get the job done? Again, in lap traffic, Hetzler fires off that turn, and he continues to have the lead, but just by a car length. It's all going to depend on how the lap traffic separates. And then again, the 36 that's about to go a lap down is Ivy Lane, Pennsylvania driver, Roger Loreno, and he got a little tap, but there is a battle for the lead. And here comes Jimmy Horton. Listen, we got three cars, three wide for the lead. Horton on the bottom of the black car takes over. Well, they can't tell, but the leader is, is Hearn as they come across the line. So Brett Hearn has taken the lead in traffic. So Hearn has the lead, Horton second, Hetzler in third, but Hetzler working on Horton as we go three wide. Horton appears to have the number two spot, but Hetzler fights back on the inside. Now this is too close to call, but Hearn continues to lead. He's got a lot of traffic, but if you're doing it all by yourself, it's a lot easier. Side by side, Horton now has the spot. Horton takes his number two spot away from Jeff Hetzler. And remember, Jimmy Horton started 14th, so he has really been firing out there. Another driver that we talked about earlier has been talking about him for a while, but he's showing in the screen right now. That's Pat Ward. He runs in the number, uh, what's that, number four spot now uh, with the number 56. Hearn leads. Then the battle for two between the uh, 33 of Hetzler and the M1. Important, and then there's Pat Ward in his 56, the red and white car. And as you take a look at Ward, uh, we might remind you, he 18 career feature wins right here at Fonda Speedway. So he's he's used to seeing the checkers here. This nice. was a battle here between Hetzler and Horton. It, it, it certainly is, and uh, the fact that Pat Ward's hanging right with him is a real credit to him. Uh, uh, he doesn't quite have the finances to support his operation like some of these top dogs out front. 
You mentioned how he had a number of wins here. 18, I think, was what you said. This was his home track for a number of years, but he switched venues uh, for 1997. He's now calling Canada England. He's starting at race place. There's Jeff Probley out of... Uh, connected in New York, slowing to the all-tier audio car. He'll bring out another yellow. You see the front end damage. That's Jeff Trombley out of Altamont, New York, actually. That's near us connected in the all-tier audio Troyer one bus number 21J. We are 32 laps in to the Budweiser River Rage at the new Fonda Speedway, and we'll continue on rush hour after these messages on the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush hour. Dirt. We've got a new leader coming out of turn number four. It's Bob McCready. It's still Gary Ballou, followed by Dr. Pepper, Tommy Corrales, and Billy Osmond makes the move on the inside as they move down the back. Great flying is out. We're on the Dirt Motorsports Hall of Fame and Classic Car Museum, where memories roar to life. The power. The Great Outdoors RV Superstore, your Fleetwood powerhouse dealer. Over 200 Fleetwood full downs, travel trailers, and fifth wheels. Coleman, Mallard, Prowler, Savannah. The best selection on Fleetwood motorhomes. Seasport, Jamboree, Bounder, and Pacero. Built by Fleetwood, the world's largest RV manufacturer. Come to the Great Outdoors RV Superstore, Route 57, Holton. Your car doesn't look, doesn't feel, doesn't smell brand new anymore. The thrill is gone. Get it back with new vinyl. New vinyl conditions, restores, and protects vinyl and leather. You get a protective finish and a showroom feel that's so real... You can smell it. Want it back? That new car feeling? It's yours with new vinyl. Available at Kmart, Walgreens, Pep Boys, Western Auto Parts America, Ace Hardware, True Value, and other leading stores. Neither rain, nor mud, nor ruts and ridges, nor rocks and rivers, nor sleet, nor snow shall keep a new Toyota 4Runner from keeping you from your appointed rounds. Power you need, and all the room and comfort you want. And with a starting price around $20,000, it could take your dollar even further. Remember, the official supplier of Dirt Motorsports Apparel is Bob Hilbert Sportswear, and you see the telephone number on your screen, and also www.netjunction.com. Slash. Is that a slash? That's a slash. That's a slash. Oh, for those of us who are so computer illiterate. <laughs> Talking about websites, www.dirtmotorsports.com. Every morning about 8 o'clock, you get the results of what's happened the night before. There's how we stand as we continue to go side by side on the restarts till the midway point of this race. 33 laps in now. Brett Hearn leads. Horton is second. Hetzler third. And we're racing once again. Billy Decker has just taken over the number four spot as he moved around the outside of Pat Ward. Or the would appear. There's a little contact, and McCready is sideways at turn one. McCready goes around. Alan Johnson evaded on the outside. Kenny Tremont went to the outside as well. There was contact, and McCready faces the wrong way on a one-way street. We've got yellow on the speedway. That is going to... Uh stunt the racing growth of Bob McCready in this event. He was 10th as we restarted on lap 33. But it's going to make it exciting for the fans for sure because he will come from the back with reckless abandon because this guy loves to win races. This is what he does for a living. It doesn't pay much to finish in the back. It pays $6,000 to win. And that's what he's come here to do here tonight. And he does he might not admit it right now but he does like that challenge of coming through traffic. He absolutely does. Uh, he'd rather uh, win one like that than uh, than run away and hide, but the big deal is he's got to win. Here we see the contact, and actually it was he that made contact with a lap car. That's Timmy Dwyer, I believe, in the uh, one car that, made, uh, that McCready made contact with and lost the handle. Lucky, lucky break. Everybody making uh, some great moves around the outside. We saw Alan Johnson make a pass on the outside of the red number 12B, and again, the black and white 115 was Kenny Tremont. Bob has had to work through so many physical setbacks the last couple of years, and he's had some trouble on the racetrack as well, but he's having a successful season this year. 
He won our Rush Hour Live opener at uh, Newberry Town, Susquehanna Speedway, a couple of weeks ago. And then he came back to win a couple of races up here in upstate New York, and uh, he wants to win another one here tonight. Maybe we see Doug Hoffman way down on the bottom of the racetrack. Something going on there. We're ready to go back to green. The green flag flies. And it's Brett Hearn in the number one position, that uh, number three Budweiser car. Jimmy Horton is second. Jeff Hetzler is third. Hetzler is third, and now Timmy Fuller has taken over the number four spot. Decker runs at five. Pat Ward stays right in the hunt as well. He's six, and he's just packed. Decker for the number five spot. David Camara has slowed in turn number three. Camara, who had made such a great move to the back of the pack, is slow. He's pulled up high in turn number four. There you see the Camara slate car high to the top of the racetrack, and there's something wrong, and David Camara will not get a lot of TV time up front tonight, or so it appears. He gets his chance on television, but not what he wanted. The yellow flag flies, flushing on the speedway. So we have to go yellow once again here at the new Fonda Speedway as we have uh, a heck of a battle raging up at the front of the pack. Brett Hearn has won this race twice in 86 and 87 as we wait for the removal of Dave Camaro's number 26. He was running seven. Yeah, and he'd come from deep in the pack to do that as well. So David Camaro's race night comes a little short. His car is owned by his dad. His dad and his brother are the crew chief. They operate a slate quarry up in Pulteney, Vermont. This is what they do for weekends <laughs> during the week here as well, whenever they get a chance to race. Uh, uh, nice uh, family, nice people. Uh, too bad that he's had a problem. And again, you saw no contact. There's something wrong in the drive train. There's McCready on pit road. McCready's making a change. What are they doing? They're working on the spoiler on the back of the car. They're going to do something there. Now, he didn't have a lot to lose. He was already at the back. There you see them moving the screen. And I see that our cowboy Paul Small is down there in the Bob McCready pits. Paul? Gary, you called it exactly. They are actually taking out that plastic rear spoiler that helps adjust the downforce on the back end of the car. Now, that may have been damaged in uh, contact a little bit earlier this evening. The interesting thing here is there's a hot pit road here off turns three and four that the teams are using tonight. McCready actually pulled in on the pace car road and tried to cut in between the, the uh, concrete barriers here to get to his pit because he really couldn't see here are just a little bit on the side. I've just spoiled it myself. And there's a pretty good crack in the bottom of it, Doug. Well, I'm not sure if the crack, I'm sure that uh, that's what they're seeing, but also they can adjust the size of the spoiler. So he wanted more downforce. It looked to me like this was a larger one. You know, we just learned that they made a change here to heat race as well. He's, a, well, he's not going to lose a lap, but he's ready to come back on the racetrack as they go green. And they're back up to full speed as he crawls back on the track. Battle for the lead, Brett Hearn and Jimmy Horton. Horton has an outside groove. Let's let's see him up front. There he is, number three, Brett Hearn, and Horton dives low. Horton from the top to the bottom. He set him up, and it's going to work maybe as they come out of four. It is still Brett Hearn in the Budweiser, number three, leading the Bob Faust, number M1 of Jimmy Horton as they work off now in turn two. It was exciting, but Brett Hearn was able to fend off Jimmy Horton and continue to lead this race. Hetzler watches for the number three spot. Here we see a little further back. That's a battle for five. There's Hetzler in three. There is the number four car, fourth place car, the number 19 of Tim Fuller. Pat Ward still remains in the hunt. Tim Fuller is in fourth. Fourth place for Tim Fuller. That puts Pat Ward in fifth. And Sports a lap down, and here comes the 111 of Bobby Barron. We'll have to check and see if he is in the lead lap. If still, that's a story there. Bobby Barron in the Tanner number 111 car. The way he's running, I would say that he's in the lead lap. That puts him in position number six. Decker is in seven. Hope that has been confirmed. The number 111, Bobby Barron, who won this race two years ago, uh, runs. That's the best. Oh, we got an accident back here. Away. Danny Johnson is in this one. Oh, there's contact. as Romano. Oh, 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 dear, dear, dear. Cars continue to. McCready's involved. Both McCready's are involved. Oh, that's... Uh, Decker also involved. Uh, Kenny Brightbill involved. A massive crash. Kenny Tremont. Kenny Tremont the 115. Steve Payne in the 7X. There's Danny Johnson's car. Oh, that is destroyed for sure. Danny's uh, preparing to crawl out of the car. And Kenny Brightbill's uh, car, the black car that we see the back screen. Boy, look at Danny. He ripped the, the belt off, the harness off, and uh, now he's uh, working to, to get out of that machine. He's got to be so distraught. Distraught, but not injured, as though it appears was certainly not seriously injured. He did take a whale of a hit. Look at how far they moved the rear end. 
No, that's been, the rear end has been moved forward at least a foot. Uh, it's a heavy, heavy crash. That's uh, Timmy McCready's uh, number 24. Chris Moore, car number 10. We saw Bob McCready in the accident as well. What a chain reaction. There's Bob McCready testing it out. Uh, it's not, the test is gonna show that it doesn't work because the front axle has been torn loose. Uh, you can see the uh, left front moving back, uh, so the axle is not properly secured any longer. That can be fixed, and again, uh, we're not gonna lose a lap here, but that's, uh, I don't know if they can get that fixed or not. It's expensive for sure. There's a uh, driver out of his car. That's Danny Johnson. Walking away, not at all happy. All this action taking place on the back stretch, and watch this. We've got a replay for you, and you'll see this chain reaction crash. And I'll tell you, these guys rarely crash hard, but here's where it starts. Chris Moore got sideways. Danny Johnson made contact. There's a yellow car. That's probably Steve Payne. Yes. Uh, no, Decker. Decker. Decker, okay. Trapped in behind, and here they come. And they keep coming, and they keep coming. That's Romano that made contact on the inside. Hoffman just got away on the out. You saw him coming by on the inside as well. There's Tremont taking a hit. McCready comes barreling in. Oh, my goodness. There's Tim McCready. Rich Ricky Jr. was involved. Roger Loreno was involved in the crash, oh. and a lot of sheet metal torn up. So there's father and son. <laughs> the McCready's involved in that one. Yeah, top five finishers on uh, Sunday night at Cornwall are going to be... Uh, Far in the back when they get this one scored tonight. Hustling to the accident scene, Cowboy Paul Small. Cowboy, what do you see? Well, right now I'm looking at the right side of Roger Loreno's car. It's up on the hook. The front end is damaged. The sheet metal is torn away on the right-hand side. Looks like uh, Tim McCready's car is not that bad. Right front flat tire and maybe a couple of bent uh, radius rods. Over here to my left, Rich Ricky Jr. in the uh, number 55 car. He's got some pretty serious front end damage. Kenny Tremont had some bad rear end damage. I tell you, there's a lot of damaged and bent metal out here, Doug. Well, it was quite a spectacular collision. In fact, only 10 cars did, and we had 30 that started. I think most of them were still running. So we had uh, 20 cars involved, almost 20 cars at least, involved in that altercation in one way or another. There you see the Rich Ricky uh, Paul Fittings car. Rich just now getting out. Uh, he have been, may have been stunned in that crash, but he's obviously okay. So Rich Ricky Jr. among the victims here in this uh, accident. Well, this has been a river rage thus far. And it was just on the banks of the, the Mohawk River on the back stretch where this accident took place, and it was spectacular. This is the Budweiser River Rage on Rush Hour. We'll continue. Brett Hearn is our leader. Rush Hour on Dirt. Sportswear Direct presents their summer collection, featuring ladies sleeveless down embroidered with the Dirt logo. Hot off the press, it's the Dirt Modified Mudslide Tee for men and women, available in all sizes. TV fans, the Rush Hour Tees are in. Don't wait on these, they're going fast. And don't forget about your favorite driver tees, too. Place any order over $25 and receive a free Rush Hour hat. Introducing the new Easy Care Certified 6-month, 6 6,000-mile 6 used car warranty. To be Easy Care certified, a car has to undergo thorough inspection. Technicians check under the hood, under the vehicle, and even take it for a road test. If something isn't right, they fix it. The Easy Care certified six months, 6,000 mile warranty. If you're a used car, it's kind of like being new all over again. I'm into tennis. The Sports Authority has everything for tennis. I'm into baseball, too. Everything for baseball, too. And I play a little golf. Golf? We got it. Plus your favorite brand names. See if that feels more natural. Hey, these guys are really into sports, too. And everyday low prices mean you never wait for a sale. Hey, I'm always into saving some cash. The Sports Authority. You've never seen anything quite like it. I'm not superstitious at all. I prepare well. Sitting in the starting gate, knee deep in mud. Put my goggles down. 
The race starts, the first pair gets money. The next pair gets money. The next pair gets money. And another. I'm down to my last pair. I'm at the finish line. I hope. New York Thoroughbred Racing at Belmont Park. The most exciting ride in sports. I'm not superstitious at all. But I always put my left boot on first. Next week, we will see you live from Rolling Wheels Raceway Park in Elbridge, New York. For the Bill Trout, Lincoln Mercury, Easy Care, Firecracker 97, live on Rush Hour, 9 o'clock Eastern. Check your local cable and satellite listings. Production support for Rush Hour on Dirt is provided by Access Rentals, Albany, New York, one of the country's largest suppliers of aerial lifts. They extend every effort to get your job done and done right. Access Rentals. Special thanks to Tim Kroll and all the fine folks at Access Rentals for their assistance. Well, we continue to be under yellow here at the new Fonda Speedway. And Fonda Speedway has its own personality and most certainly a very unique characteristic. Here's Paul Small. Every racetrack in America has an attribute that makes it unique, and the new Fonda Speedway is certainly no exception because this racetrack was built on the banks of the Mohawk River. If you go off the backstretch over there, you're going to wind up here in the drink. Several drivers have done that over the years, most notably Barefoot Bob McCready, who was the most recent entrant into the soup a few years ago. This is probably the only racetrack in America where one of these and one of these are standard equipment. <laughs> well... Isn't that a story? We're back in the pits now with the uh, uh, entry of Barefoot Bob McCready. And that is fast work by the crew. Now, we're not yet to lap 50, so these yellow flag laps do not count. We're still at lap 36. And with McCready making that uh, adjustment, he's apparently going to be able to rejoin the race there. We see Kenny Tremont uh, as well. Now, with so many cars involved, traffic isn't the problem that it was a while ago. So the, I don't know what the car count is at this point, but uh, as we mentioned earlier, 20 cars were involved one way or another of the 30 cars that started this race. Now some wild spinning going on here, collecting so many of these machines. You're going to see Bob McCready coming into the picture. Whammo! And look at the number six to the left of your screen of Danny Johnson. We uh, have one more look at it. That's Bobby Barron, and there is the three-way collision right there involving Decker and Danny Johnson. It's they get collected. Yeah, they certainly did. Oh, boy. that was a 24. Timmy McCready taking a heck of a hit as well. Danny Johnson, remember, had made the tire change, and he had come back up to position number 12. So that was a battle for 12. The green flag flies here as we go back to racing. We're 36 laps down. And it's Brent Hearn back to the lead. Bobby Horton is second, and we have a yellow flag flying once again. The caution came out just as quickly as the green came out, and it was Timmy McCready's car coming to a stop on the racetrack, and that brought out the yellow flag again. Now, of course, McCready spun off the uh, turn, and uh, therefore the yellow. Let's go down to Paul Small. Paul? It's been a flurry of activity down here in the pit area with many of the teams working on their cars. As a matter of fact, a couple of Jimmy Horton's crew members were helping Barefoot Bob McCready work on the right front corner of the Kenny Drugstore's car number nine. Talked to Kenny Tremont inside the race car. Kenny was shaking the cobwebs out when he came into the pits. They had the back end of the car up working on the rear end. He said he took one heck of a wallop out there, but he's okay. Tim McCready just had some minor front end damage. He's been able to get the Jeff Horton's power outlet number 24 back onto the racetrack. That's fast work. Fast work for Paul Small to get out of the river and pits, too. <laughs> All kinds of fast work going on here tonight. I think they're ready to go. They are. The green flag will fly. It does. We're back to racing again. It's 36 laps down. We didn't get one in of that one. We've got Hearn and Horton going at it. These two season professionals have done this so many times at so many different racetracks over so many years. Here they are at Fonda tonight going for $6,000. They're three wide behind them in the battle for the number four spot. Hats their way out wide. that number two spot. Timmy Fuller took about just a little bit further as they worked through turn three and four that time. That's again Fuller in the white car number 19. That's there in the orange and yellow number 33. Bobby Varon showing in the screen in the red and white number 111. Again, this is the battle for fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth right there. And Doug Hoffman has made his way towards the front in the blockbuster video car number one. Yellow again as we continue to follow Varon and Hoffman. Hoffman
Chapman in the number one, Barron in the 111, and another spin. And another spin by Timmy McCready. He didn't talk much about it, but this is a new team that McCready has for 1997. Jim Beachy is the owner. Randy Kasaki is the crew chief. And the sponsor, Jeff Gordon's Power Equipment, Toro uh, Long Equipment uh, Stores here in upstate New York. We have a number of great battles for position going on in this race. And just a moment ago, we were taking a look at the hoffman Baron battle. Remember, they both came out of the consolation into uh, this feature event. Racetrack is really racy, and uh, they've been able to cut through the traffic in a hurry. But again, traffic is not the problem that it was earlier. We'll give you an unofficial uh, top uh, nine here as we continue to operate under yellow. 39 laps down. Brett Hearn is the leader. Jimmy Horton is second. Jeff Hetzler third. Pat Ward four. Tim Fuller is five. Bobby Barron is six. Jack Johnson is seven. Doug Hoffman is eight. Frank Cozy is nine. Now, they've shuffled that deck just a little bit, but that's uh, approximately the way they're running as we're ready to go back to green. And we have been told that McCready is back in the pits. Barron, much like Camara last year, charged. Uh, he charged to finish fourth in the race last year after uh, making that big run from the back of the pack. But nowhere near the headlines he made in the race two years ago. Yeah, that's the year he won it. Uh, he's in a new team this year. Uh, Fred Tanner, Tanner Construction and Roofing, the owner of that car, 111, and Bobby Barron is chauffeuring here tonight. 40 laps in. Up front, Hearn and Horton, Ward and uh, Fuller. Fuller takes over the number three position. Edwards, New York driver Timmy Fuller, who raced out in Australia during the offseason, just to give him a little more experience, uh, runs in position number three with his car quest, uh, Olsen car. Pat Ward running at four. Hetzler has fallen to five. Viren is six. Hoffman is now seven. Running eight is Alan Johnson. Nine is Jack Johnson. And rounding out the top ten will be Mike Romano in car number 97. Again, all that is on lap number 41. Now Jack Johnson tries Doug Hoffman down low. Got a little too low. Yeah, he's fighting the, right the handle with the Duchess Overhead Doors car, the Dan Mazden own entry. Jack Johnson, the hired gun for the Duchess Overhead Doors team in 1997. This is his home track, as we talked about earlier. He's had only one win here this year. He'd love to win here tonight. Well, you could take the events of the first half of this race and write a novel. It's uh, some great, great racing. Every time we come to Fonda, no matter when it is, uh, Doug, it's, it's great racing. This is a, uh, a great racetrack. Natural clay surface, and they work at it to make it uh, good and wide, good and fast. And there is a good man, Alan Johnson, and will be on the inside. The coffin out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, on the outside with a blockbuster car. There's a battle of chassis there as well. They come out of turn four and down the front straightaway. We'll see Hoffman in his uh, putter-powered Troyer car being chased by the ace. seven and uh, the defending school series champion has really had his share of misfortune this year yes he has and here we go back a little further in the back and we're watching david camara we'll have to see if he is in the lead lap or not with a camara slate car 45 laps have been completed camara makes a pass of jack johnson nearing the midway point of this race of Camara, Jack Johnson in the 87. Frank Cozy showing in the screen with a Grosso trucking. Car number R24, yellow and white car, working down on the bottom of the race. Record driver out of Wind Gap, Pennsylvania. We got a look at Kenny Tremont just a minute ago in the 115. There are, there are a lot of crumpled up cars out there. <laughs> there certainly are. None as crumpled, however, is the one that's still in the pits, and that's Danny Johnson, who is out of the racing here. Uh, that vicious, vicious crash. Johnson testing the back bumper of Doug Hoffman. Can't get the job done. Down the back straightaway. Dives down low into turn three. Let's see if Hoffman has the bike coming out of four. And it looks like he will to hang on to that position. We'll refer back to that comment that we heard earlier about how the bottom one still had lots of bite. The top was getting slick. Well, I don't know. And then here down on the bottom using the bottom is Camara in the 26. We're at the halfway point now. Still a good battle for position. Hoff 
Blackman, the number one, and the 12 of Alan Johnson. These three red cars continue to battle it out as they run down the banks of the Mohawk River here at uh, the Fonda Speedway in Montgomery County, New York. We're going to pick up a Pat Ward. There he was, just flashed by. Pat Ward, no radio contact right now with his crew, so he's out there alone. That, that can be a that can be a, a lonely feeling. <laughs> That's the way he races every Saturday night. Uh, the short races, they don't allow radios, but anything over 50 laps, the Dirt Motorsports rules say you can, in fact, use uh, radios. But Pat Ward either doesn't have radios or they're not working or whatever, but he's doing it, as you say, all by himself. Lonesome, uh, if you can call it being out here with uh, 20 other guys at 100 and some miles an hour. Lonesome. I don't know if you would consider Pat Ward to be a, one of the high profile dirt modified drivers, but boy, he sure is successful and steady. Yeah, I would say that he's not a high profile driver. He just gets the job done, works on the car himself. We mentioned earlier that he designed and built this one himself. He's a great fabricator, uh, has built a lot of the parts for a lot of the competitors over the years. Uh, and uh, he and his dad told these cars, they've got a couple of them, they told them uh, racetracks all over the Northeast. Uh, definitely not a high profile guy, but he does get the job done. 40 years old, he's single, but he's got a girlfriend who's very, very dedicated to him, that's Jennifer. And uh, they're great racing people. He's running fourth, and there's the man that's running first right, right now. And the Budweiser number three, Brett the Jet. He's got a lead of about 15 car lengths currently on Jimmy Horton, who's second. Fuller is third. Ward fourth. Hetzler is fifth. We talked about the winningest driver, and of course, Hearn is in that category as well. And I think if you total up the small block and big block wins, Hearn is leading in the overall category. But the, in the uh, big block category, Alan Johnson holds a slight advantage over uh, Bob McCready, and uh, Hearn isn't far behind. Hearn, the season professional out of Vernon, New Jersey. Holy moly is the line I'll remember of him. Uh, Syracuse is the only six-time winner of the Syracuse 300. He's a great guy, father of two, wife Sue, very much involved in the activities. The list of crew members goes on and on and on. Sponsorship uh, primarily from Budweiser for the last couple of years, the Budman. This is a battle for eighth place, Dave Camara and Doug Hoffman. Camara currently in eighth. Hoffman trying out high, can't get it done. Now, Camara was the driver. We weren't sure if he was in the lead lap, but it's been confirmed that he did not lose any laps. He made a tire change, and he's back on the speedway and has just taken over the number eight spot. Hoffman runs in position number nine, rounding out the top ten. Uh, Kenny Tremont, he did not lose any laps either. You see uh, a lot of sheet metal damage on the Emmerich Associates, uh, number 115 of uh, Kenny Tremont of West Sand Lake, New York. Nine times track champion at the Lebanon Valley Speedway, where last year he earned $17,000 when he won the Mr. Dirt title in a televised race at the, the High Bank Lebanon Valley Speedway. 57 laps in. Our heat winners today, Pat Ward, Chris Moore, Tim Fuller, Jack Johnson, Rich Ricky Jr. Consolation winners, Alan Johnson and Timmy Dwyer. There is Tremont continuing to labor around the racetrack. But uh, how about that? Ninth place. That's another family affair deal. His dad is his crew chief. His dad owns the car. His mom and dad are involved. And uh, he does a great job. They're very late in arriving here at the Speedway. Now, we didn't talk about, we talked about the winners, but the fact that there are there here tonight 60 cars, or there were 60 cars that came to race here tonight, 30 qualified through that series of uh, heat races and constellations that you mentioned, Doug. So 30 made it, 30 went home. Great field of cars here tonight. You know, Danny Johnson, our Skull Bandit Racing Super Dirt Series points leader, is out of the race. Bob McCready in the back of the pack. This is going to do some serious damage and jumbling to the points picture. Yeah, I'm not sure about Bob McCready being in the back. Well, he's in, uh, I guess he's just going to lap. Uh, he would be a lap down at least to uh, uh, to the Budweiser car. So McCready struggling here uh, with the Kenny Drug Syracuse Frame Service car. Uh, Danny Johnson held the distinction of having won five Skull Super Dirt races in a row. Did that a number of years ago. He had put together a streak of two and already and the way he did it, so dominating. In fact, he led all 97 laps in Cornwall. People were talking about another five-race drink for Danny Johnson, but it's not going to happen in 1997, at least not in the early part of the going, as uh, he'll be a DNF in this one. Camara in the 26, Barron in the 111. Camara is currently sixth, and Barron runs seventh. Bobby Barron, what a story there. Now, he campaigned here last year in his own car, made an outstanding performance, got a lot of TV time. Council Harrell hired him to drive.
drive his car after seeing him perform on TV for some big races at the end of 1996. But during the off season, that team separated, and Varon didn't think he had a team at all. Then comes along Fred Tanner out of Port Byron, New York, and says, Varon, I want you to drive my car. And it's been a very made in heaven. They've done very, very well. Yeah, he lives right here nearby, about 50 miles away in Sharon Springs, New York. He tows off to race in Canandaigua on Saturday nights because that's closer to where his uh, car is garaged. The corporate jet, Brett Hearn, continues to lead our Budweiser River Rage in the Budweiser number three. We're live at Fonda Speedway, back with more after this timeout. Rush Hour on Dirt Dirt. If you're filling your prescription, worrying about what you should take with what and when you should take it and how it will affect you, maybe you're going to the wrong place. So break out of there and come to Phase Drugs, where the pharmacy is our business. Our pharmacists are always there to answer questions on dosage, drug interaction, insurance, and more. And Accufax lets you keep the Phase Pharmacist advice at your side night or day. It's a major breakthrough in making prescriptions easy. that answers that question. When compared to the Lexus SC300, the Acura 3.0 CL has front-wheel drive, more passenger legroom, a standard moonroof, a CD player, and sells for about $17,000 less. In other words, for Lexus, the relentless pursuit of perfection just became a little harder to pursue. The Acura 3.0 CL at your Tri-State Acura dealer. Hey, kid, could you fax these for me? Thanks a lot. <laughs> Can you file these for me? 200 copies of these before you leave. Too busy to watch the game? Sports Channel Light is a 30-minute condensed version of the day's best game every night at 11. Thanks, kid. You're really going places. <laughs> Sports Channel Light. How to make the game when you can't make the game. Radio communications provided to Rush Hour and Dirt Motorsports by Mid-State Communications, providing reliable, customized paging service and complete communication systems for race teams and racing fans. Mid-State Communications, the official supplier of radio communications for Dirt Motorsports. We continue to be under green here at the new Fonda Speedway, and the leader continues to be the number three of Brett Hearn. Jimmy Horton is second. Jimmy Fuller is third, Pat Ward four, Jeff Hetzer five. We're now working lap number 72. They've just completed 71. There you see Hearn running off and down the back straightaway. Yeah, he's got a six-second lead over second place Jimmy Horton. And uh, do we have... Uh, Continues to be second, third, Fuller, fourth. Hetzler moved back a uh, long ways back, a full straightaway, so they're all stretched out. The battle right now is for position number five as Alan Johnson has caught Pat Ward. They work in turns number three and four. The battle, there it is, the battle for the number five spot, Pat Ward at five, Alan Johnson at six, trying to take over the number five. The full bar, number 12B, Alan Johnson at the keyboard. Pat Ward in a pitch logging number 56 goes high. Alan is on the inside trying to make the pass. It's a battle for fifth position with 25 laps remaining. Remember, we're on a racing veteran, Alan Johnson, the all-time winningest racer in dirt modified racing. And he's down low in the 12. Great side-by-side -side battle, and they're not that far away from the fourth-place car of Hetzler. You can see the yellow and orange Smitty's reclamation car showing in the screen as well, where it was just a moment ago. Side-by-side -side as they hustle down the back straightaway. Alan Johnson on the inside, Pat Ward on the outside. Alan appears to have the advantage as they run off into turn three and four. He made the inside stick. He certainly did. These two fellas, close friends, and they're close competitors as well on the racetrack here at the new Fonda Speedway. 
Dustin Johnson, 39 years old. He's been doing this for a living for a long, long time. He started his racing career when he was 16 years old. Before he actually had a license to drive on the highway, he got into Tom Ewing Corvair and made his debut at the Canandaigua Speedway. And the interesting thing about that is he had never driven a car with standard transmission. Now, he'd been driving around the lots and so forth, but never driven a car with a standard transmission until he got in a race car. There is the 24 of Frank Cozy showing in the screen. He has just taken over position number, that would be position number seven. He's had some real engine problems in the early season. He changed to a new engine builder last week. Yeah, and it certainly paid off. Boy, they've gone to precision engines, and uh, that's uh, part of the deal that's made a difference. But uh, the CarQuest team, uh, Rick, Rick Rosso got into racing big time this year, and uh, they got off to a great start, but they cooled off and lost a number, I think, like four engines, in, maybe in two weeks or something like that. That's a battle for position. Doug Hoffman in eight spot. Cozy in. Pennsylvania drivers, Allentown, Pennsylvania for Hoffman, Wingap, Pennsylvania for Cozy. 77 laps in, 97 is uh, the number we're looking for. That's when the checkered flag flies here in Fonda, New York. Battle for the eighth position, Doug Hoffman in the number one, 24, Mike Cozy. The reason we're focusing on this battle for eighth is it's the only real battle we've got going for position right now as the uh, guys up front, those top seven, are pretty much drunk out and running all by themselves. Mike Romano showing in the screen of the number 97, but remember he was involved in an accident and he is probably down a lap or so. Cozy travels in an RV to these races with his wife and three young children. Makes it a real family affair. Yeah, he does. He runs a, a used auto parts uh, shop down in Pennsylvania, Wind Gap, uh, but uh, makes it to all the races somehow or other. Now, part of the deal there is there he owns it, so he's got some good help and uh, lets him run it when he goes off and plays, if you call this playing. And where is Frank's uh, oldest son working? Yeah, Troy, your race cars and parts. <laughs> Why not? Everybody ought to work at Troy, your race cars and parts. And uh, he's just 14 years old, but he wants to learn more about the fabrication of what makes race cars work and uh, no better place to do it than under the direction of Maynard Troyer and Billy Colton who operate uh, Troyer Race Cars and Parts up in Rochester, New York. We have a sweet 16 laps remaining in our Budweiser River Rage. We'll have the conclusion of tonight's race right after this timeout on the Dirt Motorsports Television Network. Rush Hour on Dirt. Direct presents their summer collection featuring ladies sleeveless denim embroidered with the dirt logo. Hot off the press, it's the dirt modified mudslide tee for men and women, available in all sizes. TV fans, the rush hour tees are in. Don't wait on these, they're going fast. And don't forget about your favorite driver tees, too. Place any order over $25 and receive a free rush hour hat. If you're going to be tough on your car's engine, you better put something tough in the engine. And no engine treatment is tougher than Tough Oil. Tough Oil, the world's most efficient lubricant, is making a special with your Dutch offer. Buy two eight-ounce bottles of the world's toughest engine treatment for only $25 and get a third bottle free. Now that's so tough. <laughs> it's beautiful. Tough Oil makes engines start easier and run cleaner, faster, and longer. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. That's a tough deal to pass up. Hey, not that's tougher than Tough Oil. And it's a dramatic two-horse battle. Continental victory, the Philly on the inside for the chance. On the outside, Lindy Lane and O'Donnell as they hit the wire. What a race here. Riot on the inside. On the outside, Jen and Beach Boy in an epic battle. It's deep red. It's hot lead in Britain. And hot lead, the iron horse has done it. They say if you build a better mousetrap, Introducing the new Xerox Document Center, a digital copier loaded with so many incredible features, we had to make a video just to tell you about them. Document Center scans the image once, stores it in memory, and prints out laser-sharp copies. With an upgrade, it becomes a powerful fax. Oh, and with a short, straight paper path, it's designed to be more reliable. Soon, you'll even be able to print and fax right from your desktop. So get the video on the Xerox Document Center, the best mousetrap we've ever made. 
We are back at New Fonda Speedway in Fonda, New York for the Budweiser River Rage 97. And on lap 83, I should say, Tim Fuller, the 19F, broke while running third. And uh, he is out of this race. There's your leader, Brett Hearn. And we have basically a, a trophy dash. The leader is Hearn. Second place is Jimmy Horton. Third place is Jeff Hetzler. And uh, fourth is Alan Johnson, fifth Pat Ward. And sixth was Bobby Varon, but Varon just drove off the racetrack and into the pit area. So Bobby Varon running in the number six spot goes to the pits. That puts Doug Hoffman up to six. Frank Cozy is seven. Running eight is Billy Decker in the Pennzoil car. White flag is being displayed by Bobby Watson as the field parades by on lap number 87. Will be green on 88. And Varon's car sits on pit road. And again, these are laps are counting, and he is going to lose a lap here on the pit road with the Fred Tanner car. Brett Hearn will lead the pack down the back straight away. You know, Brett actually was lapped at both Cornwall and Lernerville earlier this week. He couldn't remember the last time he had done so poorly in two straight races. He was leading last night when the rain fell on lap 11 at Tri-City. He's leading now, and the green flag flies, and we are reaching the conclusion of our Budweiser River Raid with Brett Hearn leading the way. And is having a little problem getting by the 87 of Jack Johnson, who's down a lap. Now, that's the car that Horton drove to victory here. That, the 87, is the car that Horton drove to victory last year. He's now made his way around. Jack Johnson takes over the number, is back at the number two spot, and now just has clear racetrack between himself and leader Hearn, but he's stretched out about a 12-car advantage now. He Hearn. Let's see if Horton has any answer now for Brett Hearn as they go down the back stretch. On Jack Johnson, who is a lapped car. So Horton is in second, and he's staring now down the front straightaway at Hearn and the back bumper of Brett the Jet, but can he get any closer? Brett continues to look very, very strong. As he runs down the front straightaway, not only was he looking at the rear deck lid of the Budweiser car, but he was looking up at the lap counter. It showed lap number 90, seven to go, a long ways to go, and a short time to get there. Meanwhile, Hetzler runs in the number three spot. Alan Johnson is in four, running five. Now, I believe, is the uh, Frank Cozy. Sorry, that's Pat Ward running five. Pat Ward is five. Doug Hoffman is six. track. We now have five laps remaining. Ward continues to run fifth. Pat Ward in the 56th. Burn is pulled away. He continues to have a very, very strong advantage over Jimmy Horton. He does. He's stretching it out just a little bit, Doug. There's no way that Horton's going to catch Hearn at this point unless something goes wrong with Hearn's car or unless it rains and it's not going to rain. Oh, we got a beautiful night here in Fonda tonight. There you show, saw a shot of Pat Ward working down on the bottom of the racetrack. This is going to be a good finish for Hearn if he can, or for, uh, well, for Hearn, obviously, if he wins, but for uh, Ward, if he can hold on right where he's running now in position number five. Back at six is Hoffman. Seven is the 20. I guess it would be Decker. Putting in the number eight spot. Bobby Watson shows two flag, two flags, meaning two laps remaining. Two laps remaining here at the new Fonda Speedway. And the leader continues to be Brett Hearn. Hearn wheels out of four, down across the line. White flag is in the air. We've got a half a mile to settle this one. Doug and Brett Hearn in the Budweiser Auto Palace. Cavalero Produce, Teal Pro Car is at the head of the class, and he's going to win it here in the final half line. Brett Hearn out of turn four, now swinging down the front straightaway. The checkered flag is up, and Brett Hearn in the Budweiser number three is the winner of our Budweiser River Rage at the new Fonda Speedway. Horton is second. Third is going to go. Hetzler, but he's got a flat tire. He comes across the line. Oh, Alan Johnson got it. Oh, Alan got it. Five. Then back in the river range on rush hour, and we will continue. We'll have
Making it to the pros takes a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Like quality Autolite spark plugs from CarQuest. Dependable and clean spark plugs are the key to sure starts and smooth running engines. That's why the pros turn to CarQuest and Autolite. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest. Welcome to the pros. Coca-Cola Concert Series at the Cayuga County Fairground Fair and B-104 welcome July 9th, Toby Keith. Along with Pam Dillis. And coming July 10th, it's Tim McGraw. With special guests Dina Carter and Bill Ingvall. Tickets for both shows available through Ticketmaster at the fair. Grunts Box Office, Stage Door, and 3D Art in Watertown. Call 315-834-6606 for more details. Hot Country Nights at the Cayuga County Fair. Come on down to Cayuga Country. Employees, but they feel a lot like your family. You're fond of many of them, and accustomed to the rest of them. And for almost 60 years, GHI has been helping employers like you give their employees the kind of health care they want. Employees get direct access to doctors and hospitals throughout New York State. And you get a reasonable price tag for it all. GHI. We put the care back in health care. In honor of Coors Light's 10-year anniversary, and for making Coors Light the number one light beer in New York and New Jersey, Mets fans are invited to join the celebration. Coors Light and Sports Channel want you to win a trip for two to Colorado, tour the Coors Brewery, and see the Mets play the Rockies August 16th at Coors Field. Ten first prize winners will receive tickets to a Mets home game and a sports pack filled with Sports Channel and Coors merchandise. Get in on the celebration today. Send a postcard with your name, address, age, and phone number to this address, and tap the Rockies with Coors Light and Sports Channel. Rush Hour on Dirt has been brought to you in part by Easy Care Extended Service Contracts, Up Oil Engine Treatment, Budweiser, the King of Beer, Bob Hilbert Sportswear, Mid-State Communications, Hoosier Racing Tires, Sunoco A-Plus Mini Markets, and by CarQuest Auto Parts. Welcome to the pros, CarQuest. No one has won more skull races in their illustrious careers than Brett Hearn, now number 55, and he's standing by in victory lane with Cowboy Paul Small. And Brett, the Jet, a whole Budweiser salute from your sponsors down here in victory lane. It's going to be great when you win, and they're in the house. Yeah, I'll tell you, this is a big, big win for us. All the people from Budweiser here tonight, and they sponsor the race. You guys being here, and all the people watching at home. It was a great run. We've got a great car tonight. The crew, the crew did a great job. And uh, i got to say hi to uh, Sue, Brooke, and Tyler. I'm watching at home. You always run well at special events here. You've been uh, just dominating this place over the past 18 months. How do you do it? Well, we've, actually, we've used the same car. and We've used We go back to that notebook, you know. We bring that uh, that setup notebook out and, and uh, just go back to that setup. And uh, lo and behold, it works. You know, we, we got behind tonight. We drew last in the heat race. We had to get to the top three in the heat without a, without the uh, luck of a caution just to get a draw to start 10th. So we came a long way tonight. This butt is definitely for Brett Hearn as the winner of River Rage 97, Doug. And he gets that uh, automatic starting spot for October's Syracuse 300. Brett was 10th uh, in points coming in tonight. Uh, he'll now move up a bunch of Danny and Bob, Danny Johnson and Bob McCready both having problems. The Sue that he was referring to is his wife, Brooke and Tyler, are his beautiful young children, all back home in Vernon, New Jersey. If you like this little sampler, we, it's just an appetizer for a great weekend of racing coming up the July 4th weekend. Thanks for all this musical help from the booth to Tom Skabinski and Kevin Kovac. Next week, we'll be at the Fast Track Rolling Wheels Raceway Park in Elbridge for the Firecracker 97. For Gary Montgomery, Paul Small, and the entire Rush Hour and Dirt crew, this is Doug Logan saying thank you for joining us. And so long for now. The executive producer of Rush Hour on Dirt is Glenn Donnelly. Rush Hour is a production of Dirt Motorsports and a presentation of the Dirt Motorsports Television Network.